Hi guys, it's me Chazra HD and welcome to another episode of the podcast where today we are going to be previewing the 2019 Spanish Grand Prix after the Baku Grand Prix ended just one week ago. We're going to preview all the teams and how we, how we think they're going to do and also look at who we think will end up winning the Grand Prix, finishing in second, finishing in third and also probably fourth, fifth and sixth as well. Hopefully you guys, no matter where you are in the world, are doing very well. And hopefully you are going to be previewing with us in the comments section the Spanish Grand Prix for 2019. But of course I have to bring, a, bring along my podcast guest as always, Nib, to preview this Grand Prix. And Nib, how are you doing mate ahead of this preview? Yep, I am doing completely fine. You know, needed a little bit of a recharge after last weekend's chaotic. Well, certainly practice sessions and qualifying sessions, that was chaotic. Not so much to race, but yeah, I'm, I'm doing pretty well, mate. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. And yeah, I needed a couple days off, to be honest, uh, because it was also stressful because of what happened during the race watch along. But yeah, um, I think I've had a, a good break and now going to start to get back at it. We now get uh, heading towards the Spanish Grand Prix in Catalonia, which uh, gets underway in a week's time. But now let's get into this preview. And first get into Mercedes, who of course have scored four consecutive 1-2 finishes in the first four races of 2019. I think they're absolutely going to win the Constructors, and one of their drivers is going to win the Drivers' Championship for sure, in my opinion. And coming to the Spanish Grand Prix, I don't think, realistically, any other team can stop them, because this track, I think, will suit their car they were very good here last year. Their car has been very good so far this year. And they look unbeatable at the minute. They really, really do. They look absolutely unstoppable. And it would take a brave person, honestly, to bet against them. Because they're just so quick and so damn good at getting the results. Now, when it comes to which driver will win... That's hard to say for me because Lewis Hamilton has been good at this track but uh, has sometimes not been so good. But Valtteri Bottas historically is good at this track. He was even good in the Williams days when the cars uh, were not that great. So when it comes to the winning driver, I don't think it's going to be absolutely you know, confirmed this is who the winner is going to be. I think we will have a good fight between Hamilton and Bottas but no doubt... Mercedes are going to be the fastest team, in my opinion. Nib, for Mercedes, um, can anyone stop them? And do you think we are in for a very tight uh, battle at the top between Bottas and Hamilton? I don't think anyone can stop Mercedes at the moment until um, Ferrari get their act together, which we'll get onto in a moment. But I don't really see anyone touching Mercedes in Barcelona. Bottas and Hamilton will... I believe, run away with it. They quite clearly have the best car, even though it doesn't look like it in the practice sessions. They, when it matters, have the best car and it works the best in the races. We've seen that a number of times now. So I think for Bottas and Hamilton, they just need to be fair and have some good racing like they did in Baku, of course, on the first lap until the gap just forms um, as per usual in every single race. But I think it will be very, very, very close between these two. Bottas really hasn't had an edge on Hamilton around this track in the past. It's more been Hamilton, like especially last year. Hamilton absolutely demolished everyone at this track last year. And I think we could really see the same this year, that Mercedes just have a very good car. It works well in the high-speed corners. And basically, turn three isn't even a high-speed corner. It's a flat-out part of the track now. So I don't know if you can... Well, it still is a corner, but you're flat out. So their car works well there. I think they're just going to be absolutely superb around this circuit. Yeah, I think they will. Um, and historically, they've always tended to go well here, even back into the uh, pre-2014 days. So, yeah, I think if anyone stops them, it's going to take either luck or a mighty, mighty effort to beat them because... They are just sky high when it comes to confidence and the performance of their team. Talking of Ferrari, let's go on to them now. 
Ferrari have had a very difficult start to 2019 as we know. No race wins after the first four races and only three podiums to their name. Very difficult um, start for the team. And it just has not been the start they were looking for. Ferrari, I think by this point in the season, were expecting them or were expecting themselves to have won at least two races. Because after four races in 2017 and 2018, they had already had two victories. So, very disappointing start. I really don't think Ferrari are going to massively improve for this Grand Prix. Because this track, it does require you having plenty of grip in your car. And I don't think the Ferrari car does have that right now. And it's not going to be a quick fix, as we know. So... I think Ferrari are definitely going to be behind Mercedes. And honestly, Nib, I don't know what you think, but I think there is a possibility that they could end up behind Red Bull at times during the Spanish Grand Prix weekend. Uh, do you think Ferrari are going to be competing a lot more for a podium than a race win in Barcelona? Yeah, I'd have to think so. And the last time that Ferrari were at Barcelona, along with all the teams... I don't think any of us would have expected to be saying that when we returned there a couple of months later. Ferrari dominant pre-season testing, but it's just not the case at the moment. Although their car did look absolutely mighty around this track, it's a different time of the year. It's a little bit warmer now, and the track conditions are completely different, and that could play a big role in uh, how Ferrari do go this weekend because... Oh, sorry, next weekend, because they have been struggling with the tyres quite a lot, according to Sebastian Vettel. So if they're able to get those tyres in the right window, who knows, they could potentially be able to get close to Mercedes, but I don't ultimately see them fighting with Red Bull this weekend. I still think that Red Bull car is having a few issues, although, the, of course, I think most of the teams are going to bring some upgrades for the real first proper European race of the season. I just... I don't see them being close to Red Bull, really. I think they'll be comfortably ahead of Red Bull. But I still think they'll be a, a solid step behind Mercedes for this race. They're just struggling too much. They're not too bad in the high-speed corners, but they're slower than Merck, and there's lots of high-speed corners here. The change of direction in that Merck is just fantastic. And then Ferrari's main weakness, the medium and slow corners. You know, you've got quite a lot of medium and slow corners at this track especially in the last sector and of course in the second sector so i think ferrari can might struggle here they might struggle but i still think that they'll be comfortably ahead of red bull yeah i think i think in qualifying i think ferrari will be ahead of red bull but in the race i'm not too sure i'm not too sure because if you look at baku for example a track where red bull don't like as much as this track we're coming to. If Verstappen had not been behind Perez at the start, Verstappen could have really gone for Vettel and got third place. So I, I think on race day, I think there's a good possibility that Red Bull could get a podium. But in qualifying, pace-wise, it should be Ferrari second fastest. And I think, honestly, they're going to be Ferrari probably a quarter of a second behind Mercedes at the absolute best. I don't think they're going to be within a tenth or anything like that. I just don't see how they have enough pace in that car to be as competitive as them. Next up is Red Bull. Red Bull first four races have been, I think, okay. Not too bad. Say, I know, as expected, one podium so far. I think that's good enough. Coming to this Grand Prix, though, with the upgrades that they're going to bring um, and with the way they improve over a course of a season, I think if they are going to show some real promise, they'll start to show it in Barcelona because if you look at what's coming up on the calendar, if these upgrades for Red Bull work, you've got Barcelona, which is historically a very good track for Red Bull, and then Monaco, of course, is a great track for them, so... We should, I think, definitely this weekend see how Red Bull are progressing, if they are progressing at all. I don't think we'll see if Honda are progressing because we don't get to a real power track until Canada. So, yeah, I think 
this Grand Prix will be very interesting to see how that Red Bull chassis is really coming along in 2019. And I think, again, on race day, I think they can get a podium against Ferrari. It will be tough, but they do, of course, have Max Verstappen, who has been outperforming, I think, that car at times during 2019. Uh, but yeah, Nib, for Red Bull, if the upgrades work, do you think that we'll start to see real progress from Red Bull um, at the Spanish Grand Prix weekend? I, I believe so. If those upgrades that they are supposedly bringing, um, I believe Helmut Marco hinted at those upgrades a couple of weeks ago. I don't, they haven't been quite confirmed yet. They'll be confirmed during the week, I'm sure. But I think if they, those upgrades do work indeed, that Red Bull really can make a step forward because they have been a little bit behind Mercedes and Ferrari so far this season. They've just been a tiny bit behind where they'd like to be. And Red Bull historically have always started the season off pretty slowly, except for 2011 where Vettel was 102,000 points ahead after nine races, I think it was. Um, but I think that it is really important this race for Pierre Gasly to back up the hard work that he did in Baku, finally starting to show his pace and perform and get close to it, to where Max was. Of course, he went quickest in um, the first qualifying session, but of course, because he had the he missed the way bridge in practice, he got disqualified and had to sorry not disqualified. He had to start from the pit lane, and that just ruined his race. And then he was actually having a very good race, and then he had some sort of issue, which I don't, I, I haven't seen what it was confirmed. I remember I said in the race review what it was, but I can't remember as of the moment. So hopefully for Pierre Gasly, he can back up with another strong, solid weekend, and potentially the start of an upward spiral for Red Bull. Yeah, hopefully it is, because I want to see if Ferrari can't, you know, seriously compete with Mercedes, I want to see Red Bull have a go against them because I think Red Bull as a team are better at getting results than Ferrari are uh, considering the type of car that they do have. So I hope Red Bull can really not massively jump forward because I think realistically that's not, you know, to be expected. But if they can, say, get a tenth or two tenths out of their car, um, extra than they've been getting in the first four races, then I think they are looking good for the Spanish Grand Prix. Absolutely. But now, we are going to go on, guys, to the midfield. A very tight midfield, and I think it'll be the same in Barcelona. Now, let's go on to Renault. This race is really critical, I think, for their season going forward, honestly, for Renault, because the first four races... Pace-wise, excluding Shanghai have not been good enough. Also, reliability has been poor. But with the way they have started the season and w w with where they are in the constructors in P7, I believe, they have to respond big time at this Grand Prix. They have to have a similar weekend pace-wise to how they were in China. And they really do need to start you know, motoring on in that midfield battle because they shouldn't be in P7 in the constructors. They should not be behind teams such as a, a racing point because they have so much money, so much resources, and, you know, two very good drivers. It just should not be happening. So this race for me is really critical for Renault's season. I think they will be better here than they were in Baku for sure because I think this type of track suits that car more uh, than a track like Baku. So I think they'll be good midfield-wise in Barcelona. Whether they'll have the best car, I don't know. But to be honest, they really should be 7th, 8th, at worst ninth at this Grand Prix. And if they're in a similar-ish position qualifying-wise or pace-wise the entire weekend from where they were in Baku, then I'm really worried for Renault going forward if that does happen again. I don't think it will because I think this track they will improve because, again, it suits them and I think they'll bring some upgrades which will hopefully work. But, Nib, uh, as I've said, it's a critical race for Renault and if they don't get the upgrades for their car right, 
and again have a poor weekend in Spain, then it's not exactly looking good going forward for Renault, is it? I absolutely agree with everything you've just said right there. I, it is an absolute critical weekend for Renault to get back on track, to get back where they should be. And really what's cost them so far this season is that reliability because if, if um, Ricardo and Hulkenberg had picked up those points in Bahrain, they'd certainly be higher up in the constructor standings. I'm not exactly sure where in the constructor standings, but they would certainly be higher. So if someone in the comments can say where they'd be, if that hadn't happened, that would be great because that that they're the only team that's had really bad reliability so far this season. Of course, Sainz had his little retirement in Melbourne, but I don't think he was going to get um, too much there after he got his, um, his qualifying disturbed by Kibitza, I remember, from a yellow flag. But really critical, really, really critical for Renault. Those upgrades that they might be bringing need need to work they need to get some more downforce on that car and it is a track where you'd expect Renault to do pretty well you know lots of nice medium speed corners where the Renault should handle well compared to the rest of the midfield who are probably lacking well you'd expect to be lacking a little bit more on downforce compared to Renault so hopefully for Renault's sake they can get their act together this weekend and get back on track and what they really need to be looking at and aiming for it's just a solid double points finish. Yeah, if they get a double points finish, say like 7th and ninth, or even 7th and 8th, that would be great for their season going forward. I think if Renault can score, say, I don't know, 8 points or more, I think that'd be a very good weekend for them. I'm not too sure if they're absolutely going to. Uh, but they should be better than they were in Baku. They really should because Baku was just terrible. I didn't think it would be that great for Renault anyway, but I didn't think it'd be as bad for them as it was. But there you go. Now let's go on to McLaren, who are, as I speak, in P4 in the Constructors Championship. Looking very good at McLaren right now after a double points finish, P7 and P8 in Baku. What can they do now in Barcelona? I think they won't be as good as they were in uh, Baku because, as we've seen so far this year, at tracks where power or, say, low drag is more important, the McLaren tends to be better. Um, and I think that's because they solved their drag issues uh, from last year, which really did hamper them. Uh, so I think Barcelona... They won't be as good, but I think they will still have a good car. I think they'll probably end up with a car in the top 10, most likely on race day, as long as they don't have some kind of accident or something like that. Because the McLaren car, pace-wise, especially in the Grand Prix, just does look very, very strong. They don't really tend to go backwards in the races at the moment. They tend to only go forwards. So, yeah, I think McLaren... They're in for a, a decent weekend. I don't think it's going to be a special weekend for them, but definitely a decent weekend. And I think they can definitely get a points finish. If they can really get comfortably into the top 10, that'd be a great result for McLaren, considering how tough the midfield is in terms of the battling and the competition. Uh, but yeah, I think McLaren, I think they're in for a, a decent weekend. Also, I think they will be better at Spain than they will be at Monaco. I just don't think the car will be that great at Monaco. But here should be in and around the top 10. And I think McLaren are looking good for this Grand Prix. Uh, Nib, for McLaren, do you think they can maintain uh, the type of performance they had in Baku? Or do you think, like me, that they're going to drop back but still be in and around that top 10? I think they'll drop back ever so slightly compared to where they were from Baku, but I'm not saying that they're going to be dropping and they're going to be 15th and 18th. No, I, they're going to be right on the verge of the points. McLaren seem to have a very solid race car and just a car that is just quick, which is good and very important in the midfield. You need a car that is good around most circuits, which it seems like this car is, although they had a bit of a mare at China. That could have been up to tyre temperatures because it seems like Everyone is struggling with tyre temperatures, except for pretty much Mercedes. So kudos to Mercedes for getting on top of that. But 
McLaren, they just really need to consolidate what they're doing at the moment. And of course, fourth in the constructors, they just need another good, solid, mistake-free weekend and just keep building with some upgrades coming and everything like that and just keep on building that momentum and hopefully scoring more points. Yeah, hopefully they do. Um, and I hope that their upgrades do work for them because if you remember this time last year, they brought basically a new car and it didn't work for them. Um, so... Yeah, let's hope. Let's hope for McLaren that they continue to improve their car and also keep in and around that top 10. Again, as we've said, don't think they'll be as strong as they were in Baku, but definitely one to watch in the uh, fight for a point or two. Next up, Alfa Romeo. Now, in Baku, I think, again, considering where they started the Grand Prix, they did well to, you know, nick a point with Kimi Raikkonen, but considering where they qualified, if they didn't have penalties, I think Alpha, I think they really would have been, you know, scoring points in a very strong fashion with both cars. But coming to this track, again, I don't think, kind of like Shanghai, I don't think they're going to be that great here. I think they, with Kimi Raikkonen, I think they'll be in the points, maybe, say ninth and 10th. But it's not a certainty because, again, you have the two Renaults, the McLarens, you have the Haases if they get their tyres right. So I think Alpha are in for a tough weekend and I think will do pretty well to finish in the points. I think it is possible with Kimi Raikkonen, who has been fantastic at the start of 2019. He really has. He's been, for me, one of the best drivers on the grid so far in 2019. And if he keeps up that level of performance, then I think they can nick a point or two. Um, but it will be tough to do so, especially at this track where it is hard to overtake if they, you know, start outside the top 10. Uh, Nib, for Alpha, do you think they can get points in that car or do you think they're going to really struggle against teams such as, you know, Renault, McLaren or even Haas? I think there'll be more battling racing points Toro Rosso and other teams like that this weekend and Haas perhaps of course we'll get on to them in a moment but I, I'm really hoping that Antonio Giovinazzi can replicate his performance that he put in at least during qualifying it, during the Baku weekend he was fantastic in qualifying out qualified Kimi even but of course they both had to start in the pit lane after Kimi had his deflection or front wing deflection test and they will have that sorted for this um, for this upcoming race, they're going to bring a new front wing. So that, that issue will be sorted. And Giovinazzi, um, he had his penalty, of course. So he didn't start from the pit lane. He started last on the grid. So both of their weekends hampered by, um, it was just disrupted by penalties. So if they can have a penalty-free weekend coming up in Spain, who knows? They could certainly get further and deep into the points because Baku was certainly looking like a promising weekend at least from qualifying for Alfa Romeo. So it remains to be seen how good they'll be at Catalonia, but I, I still think there is some hope for this race with Alfa Romeo. And of course, with Kimi Raikkonen, you can never really count out a points finish. Absolutely. And yeah, Kimi again, he's been so, so good this season. So good. It's a shame that he's not in a, you know, a top car, but that's just the way it is. But he's doing very well so far. In uh, 2019, I think is proving that he is still one of say, the top five or six best drivers in Formula One. Next up is Haas, who are hoping for a very good Grand Prix in the Haas Salona. Yes, I've come with the Haas puns. Um, but yeah, Haas. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, I know. I've got the Haas puns. Um, but yeah, Haas, I think. This is the thing with Haas, is I think qualifying around this track, I think they could do well. I honestly think they could. I think they could end up getting a car quite comfortably into the top 10. But again, race day, because of the way they wear out their tyres, I just don't... I just don't see them scoring points, because tyre wear is a big issue at this track. Now, it is difficult to pass here, but if you are behind a car that is massively wearing out their tyres, then your chances of passing them are increased massively at this track because this track really does punish T1 
teams that don't have good tie wear. For example, go back to 2013 with Mercedes. They started on the front row and end up, ended up finishing in 6th and 13th, I think, because of bad tie wear. And I think Haas, I don't think they'll have as bad of a Grand Prix as that in terms of dropping back that many positions off the grid. But I, I don't see them scoring points. I think in qualifying, they could get current to the top 10. And I wouldn't be massively surprised if they did that. Um, but in the race, I just don't see Haas scoring a point. And I think they will continue their pointless streak. Uh, Nib, for Haas, do you think they can finally... Uh, score their first points since Melbourne, or do you think it, the pointless streak will continue? I think the pointless streak will end. I think they will get a couple of points this weekend. So next weekend in Barcelona, not Barcelona, Barcelona. Um, <laughs> in pre-season testing, they looked very good. They looked like they had one of the best cars in the midfield. And if they are able to get the tyres in the right window, like everyone is really struggling with, who knows? They really could rediscover their form that they showed in Australia and in qualifying, certainly at China, and get up into those points playing positions. It's, Haas have just been so weird this season. It hasn't been a yo yo. They've had, well, it has been a bit yo yo as as usual with Haas. They haven't been able to capitalize on their um on their good qualifying positions or when they've just been in the good point scoring positions to actually get the points. Only when Kevin Magnussen got that good solid points finish in Australia, that they've really been able to bag those points. So Haas, they need to just focus on trying to get back into the points, try to sort out their issues that they're having with the tyres and just try to be a bit more consistent and stop the yo-yoing effect. Yeah, with Haas, um, I, we saw this last year as well. Great qualifying, but then in the race, they end up being terrible. It's just the way they are, I think, with Haas. Um, so, yeah, qualifying, I think they'll be... I think they'll definitely be good. But in the race, I, I think they're going to struggle to score points. But there you go. Next up is Toro Rosso, who did not score any points in Baku after... Well, what was a good weekend up until race day? But on race day, they had, I think, a, a bit of bad tie wear on their car and also were struggling with the tyres when it came to temperature so yeah a bit of a shame of Baku for Toro Rosso but here we come to the Spanish Grand Prix and I think they'll be better here in the race for sure than they were in Baku. Toro Rosso do tend to be good at this track um, they were pretty quick last year but Gasly got knocked down the first lap by Grosjean and I think they scored points here in 2018, 2017, oh sorry not 2018, 2017 2016, 2015, and then I think in 2013 as well. So this is a good track for Toro Rosso. And I think when it comes to race day, I think they are going to be strong and definitely contending for points. If they do get points, it's likely to be at best ninth place. I don't think they're going to be very strong and get, say, seventh or sixth if, if there's a retirement uh, up ahead for the top teams. But yeah, I think they'll definitely be in there. Maybe nicking a point. Wouldn't be that shocked if they did nick a point with one of their drivers. Um, but yeah, I think Toro Rosso race day, I think they'll be fine compared to how they were in Baku. Uh, Nib, for Toro Rosso, do you think they can nick a point, something they failed to do um, in Baku a week ago? I do think they can nick a point. And quite honestly, I think anyone in the midfield and anyone on the grid, except for Williams, of course, could nick a point. It's just that this midfield battle is so, so tight that anyone could nick a point. It, it's really possible, you know, there could be a massive crash or something like that. Something wrong with someone's strategy. You pull off a great strategy and you somehow sneak yourself into the points. And of course, it was the first race where Toro Rosso didn't score a point this season. So after, of course, Kvyat got boomeranged by Ricardo, that is, that is the term that we're calling that. He got boomeranged. But yeah, they were really struggling with um, their rear tyres in Baku. They were just sliding around. Of course, uh, Albon slid in oh, well, pretty much over and through the wall um, on the exit of Turn 1, that Tech Pro barrier. That was quite interesting to see on the first lap. But yeah, really struggling with that rear sliding 
was Toro Rosso. And at a track where you certainly need some rear stability, hopefully that that, that sort of issue doesn't um, doesn't follow them to Spain because you really don't want that around this circuit. But I don't think it will. I think they'll have a pretty solid weekend. They'll be just outside the top 10. will be very, very close between the whole midfield. And I do think that on race day, if Albon and Kvyat can do some good moves, if they can get close enough, first of all, because that is a big issue around here, they could indeed sneak a point. So I think Toro Rosso will continue to have a very solid season so far, and they might just sneak a point once again in Spain. That's one thing that you mentioned, though, that is great about 2019. I think people are overlooking this because, of course, people like to you know, watch uh, battles for the lead and for podiums and all that stuff. But the midfield is so close that you're right. Any midfield team or midfield driver can score a point. Any of them, of course, excluding Williams, but Williams are not a midfield team. Um, so that is great to see. It really, really is. Um, and I agree with you. I think definitely again at this track, I think we're going to see another great fight for points. And talking of another midfield team, Racing Point, um, in Baku, they were absolutely fantastic. You know, P6 and P9 with Perez and Stroll. Scoring, what was it, 10 points from that Grand Prix. They're now up to 5th in the Constructors, only a point behind McLaren. So if they can have another great weekend, they could end up being 4th in the Constructors, and that'd be something for them um, after just recently being took over by Lawrence Stroll. Uh, but Racing Point... I don't think we'll be as, as good this weekend because Baku, they've always been good at Baku. They, they've always been very, very good at that track. So the, there's always going to be a come down from that circuit. And you have to say Baku is probably their best track on the calendar. So they're definitely going to be slower in terms of where they are in the pack this weekend compared to Baku. Well, not this weekend, sorry, next weekend. Uh, compared to Baku. As Nib has said, with all the midfield teams, and as I've said, they can definitely nick a point, but I think racing point, I think they're going to have a tough, a tough race, I think, because I think in qualifying, I don't think they'll be in the top 10 at all in qualifying because I don't think the car will be quite good enough. I think on race day, they'll have the pace to be in the points, but because this track is so hard to pass on, I'm not too sure they will get points. I think they can, but it's going to be tough for them because I don't expect a good qualifying from Racing Point at this circuit. Uh, Nib for Racing Point. Um, of course, Baku is fantastic for them, but there's definitely going to be a come down for them uh, for this Spanish Grand Prix. Yeah, I don't think there'll be quite a, a double points finish for Racing Point coming up in Barcelona the track just doesn't suit their car as well as Baku does and certainly Sergio Perez what a performance he put in in Baku all weekend long he certainly does love that track and kudos to uh, Lance Stroll who got in the points after quite a troubled weekend and of course getting knocked out in Q1 once again so hopefully Lance can improve on that when we come to Spain next weekend and perhaps start to move forward because he really just isn't putting enough pressure on Perez, is he? He's just he's just not. It's not the same pressure that Ocon was putting on Perez or, or Perez having actually put pressure on Ocon because there was quite a lot of times in qualifying last year that Ocon was ahead of Perez and Stroll just really hasn't been good enough in qualifying so far this season. He needs to try and get that lap hooked together and he with a couple of points in Baku, hopefully that might boost his confidence and to try and spur him on to improve his qualifying performance because it's just not good enough if you're a midfield team and your your teammate is qualifying in 6th or 7th wherever Perez qualified for Baku and then you get knocked out in Q1. That That's just not good enough. You're driving the same car. There's no real excuse for you to be qualifying down that low. So Lance has to step up his game slightly against Perez because Perez as we all know, is one of the top drivers in this midfield. And I do think if that Racing Point now, they might be starting to just understand their car a little bit more. Who knows? I don't think they could get points, 
But if Sergio Perez puts in another good performance this week, or the up in, I keep saying uh, this <laughs> this coming weekend, or this weekend. It's the following weekend. Perez could sneak a point if he, he puts in once again a good performance, which we all know he can do. Yeah, um, Perez. I have to say, and I think I think it is. Um, I think this is correct that Perez is joint sixth in the drivers' championship with Pierre Gasly and Kimi Räikkönen. I think Perez has really gone under the radar this year because. In Australia, he put it in the top 10 in qualifying. Yeah, in the race, he didn't score points, but that was kind of because of Antonio Giovinazzi. Then he nicked a point in Bahrain, was brilliant in um, Shanghai, and could have beat Ricardo if the car was maybe slightly quicker. And then in Baku, was the best in the midfield. So Perez has been fantastic uh, this season. And I agree with you with Stroll. Uh, he has to improve his qualifying because they need him to be as far up the grid as possible in a car that can definitely finish in the points on plenty of occasions. They have to be um, getting the best out of their car. If they're going to reclaim fourth in the constructors, which of course they finished in in 2016 and 2017. And also I think so far this season, it has become clear who the better driver is at Racing Point. It's definitely uh, Sergio Perez. And of course, last of all is Williams. Uh, yeah, we, we don't really care, to be honest, about Williams at this point. They're going to be dead slow. I, I remember watching them around this track and testing. They were so, so poor compared even to the back-end midfield team. So, yeah, they're going to be miles off the pace. And I'm going to be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if they're not too far away from the 107% rule. But let's move on from them. And now we'll go on to our predictions for the podium uh, and also top three in qualifying for the Grand Prix in Barcelona. In qualifying, I think Lewis Hamilton will get pole position from Valtteri Bottas in second. And in third place, I am going to go for Sebastian Vettel, only just ahead of Charles Leclerc fourth. And then, of course, it'll be most likely the two Red Bull drivers on the third row. But then on race day... I'm going to go, again, Hamilton to win uh, from Bottas second. But in third place, I am going to go for Max Verstappen because I don't think Ferrari are really going to improve that much in Barcelona. And also, I think the Red Bull car will be not a massive step forward from what it has been in the first four races, but it will be improved. And this track... I think will suit the Red Bull car very nicely compared to the Ferrari. And then in fourth and fifth, I think will be the two Ferrari drivers. I don't know who will finish ahead of who in the Grand Prix at Ferrari. But to be honest, for them, it doesn't really matter. Because if they're not winning, then I don't think Ferrari really care where they finish. Uh, Nib, for the Grand Prix and in qualifying as well, where what do you think the top three is going to be? for the Spanish Grand Prix? Well, with you throwing in the qualifying here, you really made my predictions a lot easier because I'm just going the good old boring, simple <laughs> way here. That is for sure. And I think taking pole position in Barcelona will be Lewis Hamilton. We've seen how good he is around this track. We've seen it last year, and I expect nothing less from the five-time world champion Lewis Hamilton at Barcelona. But I think in second place will be Valtteri Bottas. He's had a superb start to this season, really pushing Hamilton. Of course, he is leading the championship by that good old one point, which is fantastic. We all love it. Fantastic. <laughs> um, but then in third place, I think it's going to be Charles Leclerc. He was he was very good here last year. It was really a coming of age. We saw we started to see that he was a very good driver when he had that. Great battle with Fernando Alonso, I remember. So I think Leclerc will beat Vettel this weekend. And then in the race, I'm going to go for Valtteri Bottas to win the race because Porridge VTEC power, Bottas is going <laughs> to absolutely do everyone. I, I I think he's going to just have a really good start compared to Hamilton. We've seen we've seen it yo-yo between who gets the better start between the Mercedes driver. And I think it'll, this time it will be Bottas who gets the better start? I think he'll go around the outside of Hamilton, down into turn one, 
and I think he'll get into the lead. And then after that, I don't see them risk wanting to risk a crash or being able to get close enough in the dirty air that we're going to have around here. So then obviously in second place, I'm going to put Lewis Hamilton. I just think that he'll get jumped at the start by Bottas. And then that will be race over from there on. But then in third place, I'm going to go for Sebastian Vettel. I think there might be a couple of shenanigans again with Charles Leclerc. Who knows what happens with Ferrari? It seems as if the team's starting to get a little bit unsettled with those two. So I really hope that that, that there isn't any unsettling in any shenanigans. But I just have a feeling that Vettel in the race will pip Leclerc for that final podium position. So yeah, that those are my predictions for the Spanish Grand Prix. And I am certainly looking forward to it in the next couple of weeks. Um, yeah, I think you say they were Vettel and Leclerc. I think Vettel and Leclerc will be very, very close at this track. I mean, in um, again, we don't know the fuel loads and all that stuff from testing, but if you look at the best testing times, I think it was only uh, 0.020 of a second separating them, I think. It was very, very close. So I think it'll be similar in um, in Barcelona. I think they'll be very close. And I think it could be right on race day. Might have some, some team orders again. Might have some racing at one point. We'll see. Uh, hopefully for Ferrari, that stuff doesn't happen. And they can just go out there, go for it and get... A result that we're not expecting, but I think at best they're going to finish in third place, unless, of course, the two Mercedes drivers have some kind of issue, whether it's a crash or a you know pit stop going wrong or something like that. But, guys, that is it for this episode of the podcast previewing the 2019 Spanish Grand Prix. Don't forget to hit the like on this video and don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. As we do the podcast every weekend, there is not an F1 race weekend, so make sure to subscribe. For more content like this, bottom right of the screen, you can click subscribe right there, or go to my homepage, subscribe, and hit the notifications bell. But I just want to say thank you to Nib for coming along once again to another episode of the podcast. Thank you very much, mate. Of course, always good to be on the podcast, and of course, apologies that we couldn't do the podcast live. This week, sadly, I just had a few things that were going on, so I could not, we couldn't do it live on the usual day, which this will come out. But yeah, of course, great to record it with you as always, and always great to have a good conversation about the upcoming Formula One race in Barcelona. Absolutely. And again, thanks, mate, for um, coming along. But I just want to say also, uh, comment down below what you thought of this video, and comment down below. What do you think will happen at the Spanish Grand Prix? Do you think Mercedes are going to easily win? Do you think Ferrari can compete? Do you think Red Bull can get a podium? What do you think will happen in the midfield? Let me know in the comments section down below. I just want to say though also, um, before I go on to the end of this video, just want to let you guys know of the two videos that are coming up between now and the practice to watch along uh, next Friday for the Spanish Grand Prix. On Tuesday, I'll be uploading a video uh, about the latest news in Formula 1, which will be this week in Formula 1. And then I'll do a video on Thursday looking at all the teams and looking at how they can improve. So I'll look at all the teams, look at how they can improve, what areas of the car that they really need to look at and really you know, improve that area so they can make 2019 a better season. Uh, than it has been so far. So yeah, those are the next two videos coming up on the channel. Also, don't forget to join my Discord link below in the description. That's the best place for notifications, my videos and streams. And also, that is the hardcore Chazza HDF1 community. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Chaz6110 and check out my website ChazzaHD.com for more content like this. But guys, until the next podcast and until the next video, it has been me, Chazza HD. Goodbye.